Yes, everybody. Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me from Blacksburg, Virginia at Lane Stadium, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here to discuss three things from Carolina's 17 to 10 season opening loss to the Hokies. Obviously not the display that Carolina wanted to say the least. And I know some Carolina fans are going to be a little bit disappointed in what they saw tonight from the Tar Heels. But, you know, as we always do, let's let's go ahead and dive right into it. Um, you know, Virginia Tech came out of the gates with a lot of energy. I think Mac Brown and his staff expected it. I think uh, Carolina as a whole expected it. I think Carolina fans expected it. When you consider how how long you know the, the Virginia Tech and teams around the country have not played with fans going into a raucous Lane Stadium atmosphere, which I'm sure you'll attest to here in a little bit. But a lot of energy from the Hokies early. UNC just didn't match it offensively, defensively. And I think you know getting behind early like they did and setting that tone early like they did um, really put the Carolina in a hole. And I guess ultimately they weren't really able to dig themselves out of it. Well, Mac, when we talked to Mac on Monday. He said, this is going to happen. Yeah. And, and you and I did it, talked about it on our podcast. I did a radio spot up here in Virginia. I, they're going to have a lot of energy going to bottle up, and they're going to funnel it right out of the gate into this place. The Tar Heels did not handle it well in any facet of the game. Mm-hmm. There were some curious things that were going on. It's first game for everybody. I think when pe- people do need to remember this, only two scrimmages in August now. The NCAA did not allow any more than that. And I think they wanted to see more from certain position groups and certain guys before going into a game like this. Mac even said afterward, and, and trust me, guys, I'm not making any excuses. Mac said afterwards, a lot of people are playing scrimmages this weekend. We opened up in Lane Stadium. So, <laughs> but you point. know what, though? If you're a top 10 team mm-hmm. and you got a Heisman Trophy candidate, and you got NFL guys all over your defense, and you got NFL guys in the offensive line, shouldn't be an issue. Should be able to handle this. I know it's the first time they played in front of a real crowd in two years, but a lot of teams around the nation are dealing with that this weekend, and the ones that are home this weekend will deal with it next weekend or the weekend after. You've got to be able to handle these moments, and so often in this program's history, they don't handle these moments, and tonight was one of them. What really kind of struck me was how Virginia Tech just dominated the line of scrimmage in the first half yeah. both sides of both sides offense and defense they dominated the line of scrimmage carolina when virginia tech got the ball back with like a minute 33 left and a half mm. we thought they would just run out the clock and carolina would go in the locker room at that time carolina had run 18 offensive plays that's unbelievable 18 yeah. offensive plays so the offense had no no time to get into a rhythm they struggled when they did have the ball. They had no time to get into it with them. And in fact, on four of the last nine offensive plays they ran in the first half, Sam Howell was sacked. And we'll deal, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But the domination started from the opening kick and it continued right through halftime. Carolina, Carolina did make some adjustments at halftime on both sides. Mm-hmm. They ran the ball a lot better. They were much better defensively. Aquarius Conley was phenomenal tonight. He covered a fumble, got a big interception, and kept keep Carolina in the game. But you know, they, they, they spotted Virginia Tech that 14 nothing lead. And, and I kind of thought, and I think I put on our message board, you know, they're only down 14 points. Given the way it looked in the naked eye, looking out there in the field, it looked like they were down three or four touchdowns. Yeah. It probably should have been because that first turnover, Tech was heading in for a score. Mm-hmm. There was nothing Carolina could do to stop them, but they got the turnover. Trey Morrison forced it. JQ Conley uh, recovered it. And that kind of kept them at base. They did enough to hang around. And then they started moving the ball a little bit in the second half, but they still made mistakes. The legal, the legal receivers downfield a couple of times, Sam getting sacked, Sam's interceptions. So they didn't come out of the gate well, and they didn't respond well, and it lingered too long. You and I talked in our podcast the other day. It, you know, we kind of knew that was going to happen. But if they figured out a way to come out of it by the second quarter and take the crowd out of it some, they would position themselves to pull away for what we thought was going to be a pretty hard-fought win. They didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely not. You know, it's and yes, it was crazy. I've yeah. seen a little bit crazier here. There was a Thursday night here against Florida State in 2012. Mm-hmm. Probably the craziest I've ever seen it here in person, but it was pretty crazy tonight. And I do think that the constant buzz affected Carolina a little bit, but it was more Virginia Tech just whipping them at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, definitely. I thought Carolina was a, a bit fortunate to be behind only 14 to nothing at halftime. And I'm going to run through some stats real quick, and then that'll kind of segue into the second thing I want to talk about. Um, 14 nothing at halftime. Obviously, uh, Virginia Tech had, had outgained Carolina 203 to 118. Um, and then you're looking at the looking at the end of the game stats. It's actually kind of surprising. 
Carolina finished with more first downs, more total yards, more passing yards, more rushing yards. Carolina with 354 total yards um, against Virginia's 296. So in the end, you know, I think that was more of an attest to how good Carolina's defense was. Only 350 yards for a pretty explosive Carolina offense as you expect a little bit more out of. And like I said, that segues into the second thing I want to talk about, which was uh, I thought Sam Howe really struggled tonight. Um, individually, 17 for 32 through the air, 208 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. I think really the the standout of that. I know a couple of them were a little bit unlucky that they went the way they did. I know the Justin Olsen one in particular, where you know that was all Olsen just getting out muscled on that play. So from what we've seen, from the expectations Sam Al has as a Heisman candidate coming into the season, from what we've seen from him over the past couple of years in particular, these are not standards we're putting on this guy that are unrealistic. Right. Sam Howell is continually delivered for this team. And I thought tonight he tried to do a lot. He told us that after the game. You know, I, I tried to force some things because I was a little bit frustrated. I think that came from the lack of, you know, protection he had back there from the offensive line in particular, really throughout the whole night. But ultimately, Carolina's going to have to get better performances out of Sam Howell to win. And I think it's a credit to Carolina that was only a seven-possession game when you look at, you know, how poorly their star man really played. Yeah, look. The receivers didn't do a very good job of getting open much of the night. Yeah, no. I mean, that finding grass, they were running around so there was no grass. There mm -hmm. were orange guys in the way of the whole time. The offensive line did a terrible job of pass protection. And so those two things, you can be Sam Howe and have a bad night when those exactly. two things occur. Now, that doesn't take away any of, the, any of the blame on Sam. Sam did not play well. That last interception was an example of sort of his mind working through that thing that he, that he worked so much on the offseason. He talked a lot about how sometimes he held on the ball too long and he and he took sacks because he was trying to make a play. And so I think that was one of those instances where his old instincts were kind of kicking in a little bit. He starts getting dragged down. Oh, I better get rid of it. He said he was trying to throw the ball away, but he threw the ball away in the play field of play and it was picked off. I think I actually thought they were going to score. If they don't get the interception. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to score and tie that thing up, which is a testament to this team in some ways that they could be so horrible in so many respects but then be in position to be in that situation like that. Yeah. But what cost them were the sacks, the pass protection, even look, Sam ran the ball a lot. In fact, at one point in this game in the third quarter, Sam had attempted 11 passes and had run the ball 11 times. Yeah. And it wasn't just, you know, the sacks being credited as a run. Look at late in the first half. I mean, he's tucking in and running. Some guys in the press box are saying, you know, they talked about him learning how to slide two years ago. He wasn't sliding. He was trying to get yardage because there was a need because they were struggling so much. So I do think we saw that come out in him. It was not a good night. First time he's ever thrown an interception in the fourth quarter at Carolina's first three interception game. You know, one of them was a tip ball, kind of a tough play. The one with uh, Justin Olsen, I mean, you could go either way on a bottom line. He wasn't sharp. And if it wasn't for the sacks and it wasn't for the picks, I do think they probably would have won this game, even with all the other things that didn't go well. But you know what? When you give up six sacks and you throw three interceptions on the road and it takes you a whole half before you start running the ball any, you're going to lose games against good teams. And even though Virginia Tech hasn't quite been the Virginia Tech we're used to the last couple of years, still got a lot of dudes in that team, and they, they showed out tonight. Yeah, definitely. I thought Virginia Tech, especially defensively, was really good from start to finish, played with a lot of energy, kind of fed off the emotion of the crowd in particular. And I thought Virginia Tech in some ways, and Carolina, I should say, was a little bit lucky, like I said, being behind 14 nothing, but a little bit lucky that they even stayed in the game because Virginia Tech's offense, after those opening few possessions in particular, you know, didn't do a ton, really struggled. Uh, That's also a credit they kept to Carolina. Carolina. They kept Carolina in the game. Yeah. Virginia Tech gave Carolina a life, a big life. 100%. Line. Mm -hmm. And that, that played a huge factor, obviously, and in, in Carolina sticking around and, and, and only losing by seven. Now, last thing we're going to talk about before we get out of here, um, you know, where do we, where does Carolina, I should say, go from here? Disappointing loss, not a season defining loss because it is the first one. I know Max said after the game that, you know, or maybe it was Jeremiah Gimmel said he told the team, um, that, you know, we can win out. You know, it's something they, they feel as if they can do and something they feel is very realistic. So, where do you think the Tar Heels go from here after, you know, a disappointing season opening performance against the Hokies? Well, they could win out, but not if you're giving up sacks. That's a yeah. <laughs> I mean, not if receivers aren't getting open. Look, they didn't run the ball very well tonight. DJ Jones looked like their best running back tonight. Chandler had a couple of runs, mm -hmm. but there was no consistency there. They didn't do a great job run blocking, obviously. They didn't do a good job in pass protection. This is an offensive line that has four guys that have started for two years now. Granted, Kieran Johnson was the center tonight. Brian Anderson did not play. Uh, Mac told us earlier in the week that Anderson would play at some point, but he didn't. So I expect at some point 
he'll be back. And, and that might be a little bit of an improvement. But look, the tackles got whipped tonight. The guards got whipped tonight. Uh, Garrett Walston struggled in his blocking assignments, either in the run or in pass protection. So they've got to get a lot better in that area or they're going to have more games like this. They're not going to win out. They've got a much tougher teams on the schedule down the road. Uh, so they must get a lot better. And to that, Max said after the game, and this is not a direct quote, but it's close. There's going to be a couple of very uncomfortable days with his coaches hmm. and with some of the players because they have to fix these things. It's good for them. They've got Georgia State coming in next week. Georgia State's not a patsy. Yeah. Georgia State's got some guys. They've got a lot of transfers that have transferred down from Power 5 programs, and they're going to be very confident going into Chapel Hill, especially now thinking they can get a win. So this is a great opportunity for Carolina to clean up a lot of that stuff and get a win against a club it should handle. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you right now, they've got a lot to clean up. And, and the great thing about the first game is you get all this stuff on film. You would much rather get it on film and get a victory, but they didn't. They got a loss, and it's not season-defining. But I'll tell you right now, for right now, CFB talk is gone. For right now, yeah. Heisman talk is gone. And Sam even said, you know, now we won't really feel the pressure much. And yet uh, I think Greg Barnes asked him a little bit about that a moment later. And Sam said, well, we don't really pay attention to that stuff. I think they did. Yeah, I, think I think they, they did, did a little bit. They're human. They're on social media. It was unavoidable. We were asking questions about it. People were asking him questions a week and a half ago. How are you going to handle it if you guys maybe lose the first game? Look. It's out of the way now. They lost. All they can do is get better now. They know what areas need to be fixed, and there are quite a few of them, but they have the personnel to do it. They have the coaching staff to do it, and I would think that they have the wherewithal to get it done. They've got really good leaders. they got a superstar quarterback who didn't have a great night. He's going to play better moving forward. They can still achieve their goals. They can still win the Coastal, and if they run out and they're in that conversation late in the year, you never know what could happen. Right now, that should be the focus. Right now, the focus should be get better. Coaches are going to have some tough meetings with Mac. He's going to be very honest with them. And mm -hmm. they're going to have to get the practice this week and fix stuff and take care of business next week and begin the process of getting better. Definitely no need to hit the panic button yet if you're a Carolina fan, no. but definitely a, a disappointing opening night. They're still further ahead. This reminded me of FSU yeah. oh, last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And what did we talk about the other day in the podcast? Mm -hmm. Look, they're, they're way ahead of what anybody thought they would be right now. I told you guys, and some people hate when I use the word process, but they were still in the process. Mm. And this is part of that process. And I, I do think they need to kind of hurdle over some of the process talks on because they have the personnel and they should have won this game. They were, they on paper were the better team. They should have won, but they didn't. So they got to fix that stuff. And fixing it is a part of the process. If they don't fix it, then it's no longer a process. It's an issue. Mm -hmm. And so you want to avoid the issue, keep doing part of the process and see where they are in a month or so from now. I think they're going to learn a lot from tonight. Uh, from tonight. I think they're going to get a lot out of it and they're going to move forward and get better, but they do have some significant issues that must be addressed. Let me close by saying this, mm -hmm. Jordan Tucker, the offensive tackle told us a couple of weeks ago that their goal was to not give up 20 sacks this season. They gave up 35 last year and it's not just the OL. There's a lot of people involved in that. Well, they've only got 13 left to, to get to hit 19. 14 more, they hit 20. They gave up six sacks tonight. And they almost yeah, had number good. seven with that last interception. So mm -hmm. they got to clean a lot of stuff up. Yeah, definitely got to clean a lot of stuff up. Disappointing loss for the Tar Heels on opening night, 17 to 10 at Virginia Tech. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones at Lane Stadium. As always, guys, for all your post-game coverage from Carolina's loss tonight, make sure you check out TarHeelIllustrated.com. You can find the link in the description below. And keep it locked to our YouTube channel as well for all the post-game interviews and, of course, this three things video as well. You guys know the drill. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know every time we upload. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Nice.